everybody quest wise here and we are in the new studio here uh this is i think my second video i've done from the new cave the first time you've seen my face or really much of the studio uh itself and today i, I want to talk about some tabletop miniature gaming i do quite a bit of this actually um on top of my love for role-playing games i i love tabletop miniature games and there's about four Four different games that I play consistently. One of them is Warhammer 40,000. Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, which is the fantasy version. Uh, I also really love Star Wars Legion, and we'll talk about some more of that in the future because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, as you can see. Uh, but I want to talk more about Star Wars Legion because I think it's a really great game. In fact, it's the game that I, as a kid, playing with the action figures, always really, really wanted, and it's finally here. It's been out for quite a while now. Now the, but the game I want to talk about today is another game that's been out for a fair amount of time, but they're starting to really get their feet underneath them, and they're really, really starting to come out with some amazing stuff, and that is Marvel Crisis Protocol. This is by Atomic Mass Games. They've done uh, just some amazing things with this. I, uh, I've always been a lifelong Marvel fan, and while I read other comics... Uh, Marvel's always been near and dear to my heart. I started off with Spider-Man, I started off with X-Men, and X-Men is what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be a little bit of an unboxing as well. Um, I'm going to start my X-Men team, and I want to open a couple of the boxes, show you what the minis look like when you get them, buy them from the store. I'm going to go over the cards and a little bit about the game and how the game plays itself. But if you're not familiar with Marvel Crisis Protocol, it is a skirmish tabletop miniatures game that lets you play all of your favorite vir her excuse me, heroes and villains from the Marvel Universe. And they've made some really interesting choices. So, you know, there's a, the Avengers are, are always awesomely huge. So there are a lot of choices when it comes to Avengers. Um, things like uh, Doctor Strange and uh, Iron Man and Captain America. But then we also have, you know, the major notable villains like Magneto and Red Skull and Venom. And what's really cool about this game is that it allows you to play all the dream teams you've ever thought of. Now, it rewards you for playing heroes and villains that are part of a team naturally, that have, have sort of over the, the span of the comics have really come from specific teams. So, for instance, you know, Iron Man and, and Captain America and Thor being part of the Avengers, um, or as you'll see today, Cyclops and Storm being part of the X-Men, but you don't have to play that way. Uh, what I mean by it rewards you to play as a certain faction, like the Avengers or X-Men or the Cabal or Brotherhood of Mutants, is that there are cards, and I'll show you the cards when we open these packs, that are specific to a certain team. Now, you can mix and match however you want. If you wanted Red Skull and MODOK and and Captain America and Wolverine on a team, you could do it. And uh, and it's, it's a possibility it might actually play pretty well depending on you know utilization of their abilities between them uh, and being able to work together consistently but like i said the game does reward you for playing specific teams in that, that they have specific cards that are tagged as avengers and only uh characters in your team can use those cards characters in your team that are part of the avengers faction could use a card that that, that references the Avengers. And you'll see that in a few minutes because one of the boxes I'm going to open has a character in it that's been most notably a villain and according to Atomic Mass Games is listed as being part of the Brotherhood of Mutants. I'm going to use her uh, in my X-Men force as well. And I'm just starting my X-Men thing, but X-Men have always been my Spider-Man. X-Men have always been uh, my, my favorite um, groups of heroes when it comes to the Marvel uh, universe. Now these are all, most of these are drawn, I would say, almost exclusively from the comics and not the MCU, not the not the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but from the comics themselves. And you can tell that there are people in this company that are lifelong Marvel fans because you'll see little nods to uh, to events, to to phrases, to titles from from many, many years ago. And some of them are pretty obvious, and you'll see that when I open some of the X-Men cards. And some of them are a little bit more obscure, and I, I think that's a really neat touch, and I, I, it really brings that sort of Marvel feel to the tabletop. And eventually in the future, I'm going to go over how the game plays, um, 
I have a friend who built me an amazing table, all 3D with buildings and lampposts and uh, uh, you know, balconies for the buildings and all sorts of stuff, scatter terrain all over the place. That's the other great thing about this game. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it, when you're reading Marvel Comics, things get destroyed and they get moved around. Um, so you have things like the Hulk throwing a car. Uh, and that's stuff that you can do in this game, is that you can specifically destroy area terrain. Certain characters can throw things uh, and make uh, a very cinematic feel to that. But join me at the table. We're going to go back over to the, to, the, to the painting desk, and we're going to take a look at these boxes, do a little unboxing, and we're also going to go through the cards. I'm going to show you a little bit about what I want to try to accomplish when it comes to building my X-Men Force. Sit tight. Okay, so as you can see here, I have uh, two character packs. These are both uh, labeled as X-Men. And again, they're just sort of, uh, sort of titling these to show you sort of what you can expect from you know these things, these, these packs. Um, most packs will come with two figures in them, as you can see here. Um, some of the larger figures will have one in them. For instance, the Hulk, uh, Mr. Sinister, uh, a few others only come with one figure because they're much larger and a lot more going on. With them as well too and like i said we'll go into another video uh if you're interested to see more about this game and how it plays but when you buy the starter pack which is the box i showed you earlier in the video you're going to get a bunch of miniatures mostly uh, a variety of things from avengers on the hero side uh spider-man um you're going to get doctor or you're going to get um red skull dr octopus a few others that kind of thing so you get a kind of nice variety to start, but then you can start to buy these and they'll narrow down your forces a little bit more. And I, having been a huge X-Men fan, I've always wanted to build an X-Men team, but I put it off for quite a long time. Uh, but they've been sneakily, on the Atomic Mass Games website, they've been talking about uh, uh, a teaser of the Sentinels coming out as being a faction that you can play as the Sentinels. And I thought, now is the time to start my X-Men team so I can get them built. I can get it kind of finely tuned in the way I want it to be. And, uh, I, you know, I can be ready for when the Sentinels come out. Because that's a game I really, really want to portray is X-Men versus Sentinels. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Cyclops and Storm here. And I took the cellophane off so it wasn't so loud and annoying. Uh, but I do have... Uh, everything inside is still intact. So when you get a box like this, you're going to get a bag with the miniatures in it and some bases. And a nice little divider, cardboard divider that keeps the cards and everything safe so that some of the sprues and stuff don't press into it and, and mar up your stuff. You're also going to get this little sheet. And basically what this is, is it gives you a, a, you know, a list of the credits, credits of the people who worked on the game. But it also gives you a... Um, uh, some step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble the miniatures. These can be a little bit fiddly. If you've not played this game before, I would say it's probably medium difficulty when it comes to assembling miniatures. So if you're very new to the hobby, this can be a little bit frustrating. Some of these figures, and I'll show you in a minute, looks like Cyclops is going to be pretty straightforward. But when you look at Storm, it's a little bit more difficult. She's got these lightning bolts that she's sort of riding on. And if you look here... It appears as if her body simply attaches to the lightning bolt with this little tiny connection piece here. And that's been a problem with these miniatures in the past is that uh, they, some of them, while being very dynamic when they're built, are not very sturdy. There's not a lot of, of, uh, of strength to some of the things. Uh, the, the most uh, notable one was Doctor Strange, who's coming out of a portal. Uh, and the only thing connecting him to the portal is the very tips of his cape. Um, and that can be very uh, delicate when you take it to a game table. And so I've seen a lot of people who have modified it in such a way that, that the uh, he's actually resting on his feet and that the portal is sort of turned. So it still looks like he's coming out of the portal, but he has a little bit more structure behind him to kind of hold him in place. I may do that with Storm. Um, I may just uh, attach her in a different way as to be able to... Um, uh, have, give her a little bit more stability uh, when I bring her to the game table. So that's what that is. Let's look at the miniatures next. We'll, get, we'll save the cards for last so you can kind of get a good feel of what the miniatures look like. They do come on a sprue, so uh, if you've done any sort of miniature gaming before, uh, especially in the kin of like Warhammer 40k uh, or Age of Sigmar, these are going to be pretty familiar to you. 
You always get extra bases, but they do give you a variety of different bases. Already detailed bases, which is really nice because a lot of Games Workshop stuff, you get to get a flat black base um, and you have to sort of detail and, and flock and, and, and give terrain to the base itself uh, on your own. These are very nice because they do give you a variety of different bases, so you're going to get two more than what you actually need. You do end up with a lot of extra bases with this game, but they give you the nice choice of different what you want your character to be on, which is really fantastic. And then once you've already primed these, you dry brush some gray over these or a little bit of steel on the doors, and you've got some beautiful bases right out of the right out of the gate. This is a sprue with uh, Cyclops. Hopefully you can see that. I know it's just a little, a little weird on the camera here, but... Um, this is a Cyclops sprue. What I noticed uh, about this earlier when I was looking online is that I saw some variant heads and I thought well, it would be really interesting if they gave this to you and they actually do give you some variant heads. So the variant is really uh, a matter of uh, he's got the hooded head. It's got the sort of cap that comes up all the way over. I know it's really hard to see on the video but the, 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 the sort of nylon bodysuit goes all the way over his head or the sort of traditional one where his hair is sticking out which is, I think is the one I'm going to go with because I, I like that, that look and that feel um, but doesn't look too bad I think this will be a pretty straightforward miniature to put together then Storm, we have Storm and there's a lot of pieces to Storm so we've got some different parts of the lightning effect here um, it looks like eh, it looks like part of her is actually attached to the lightning bolt here so maybe that's going to give it a little bit more stability than I thought but at first glance I thought man this is going to be pretty pretty weak in spots so uh, but we'll see once I get her built uh, you get one uh, head choice for her there's not really any options for her here other than the way that you might maybe paint her um, I like the effect that they're the rocks um, sort of base that the uh, lightning bolts fit into it makes it look like the lightning bolt is destroying the earth down behind her course her cape kind of flowing out behind there as well her legs she's sort of floating in the air as storm is often uh, known to do that very heroic sort of storm pose then you're going to get a bag with some cardboard and some cards and what i really like about this game as well is that they've put a lot of design decisions into um you know what these characters can do and they're all very unique and they're all very different uh, based upon the characters from the comic books and I find that really uh, really interesting it gives you a very dynamic feel to the game uh, you're going to get this cardboard if I can get it out of here with some tokens uh, these are some lightning tokens so I'm assuming that she that some reason to sort of keep track of that you're always gonna get tokens with the sort of faction affiliation in there as well uh, those are for used for different types of scenarios and whatnot you also have some more lightning big lightning tokens and stuff here oh i think these are actually for shock these are different conditions so this might be stun this might be shock and then she got some lightning tokens here there are certain conditions that your characters can have them fall upon they could be poisoned they could be stunned they could be shocked um a variety of different those and we'll go over those when i go into the full details of the game in a different video but these are your character cards they are all double-sided. Most characters have a, a, a healthy side and a injured side. Uh, the only notable one I can think off the top of my head that does not is um, the Hulk, I believe. He only has one side, so once he's KO'd, um, he's out of the game. But he does have like 20 health points. So up here at the top of the card, you're going to see their name. Their sort of alias and their name, uh, and you got a bunch of different uh, icons here, which again we'll go into later in the game. But then you have all your abilities. These are your basic attack abilities here at the very top, and in the very bottom, he's, these are all your superpowers. Uh, so she can be a leader. She can be a leader of the uh, X Men Gold team, and um, it's affiliation the Uncanny X Men. Um, and if she is the leader of your force. Uh, she can use this this uh, leadership ability. If she's not, then this is sort of grayed out for the game. She can't use it. I'm actually going to use probably more than likely Cyclops as my leader for the X-Men team that I'm building. Uh, but it'd be it's interesting and nice to be able to have her option to do so as well. And then she's got some special superpowers at the bottom here. Eye of the Storm, Tempest, Goddess of Storms, uh, and uh, and Flight. And she's immune to shock. I mean, which is pretty obvious, right? She's 
which is a, the goddess of, of storms. Um, once they take a number of damage points equal to their health, which is up here, which hers would be five, uh, she becomes stunned and her card flips over and then you use this side. Um, she gains another five health and then once those are gone, she's actually knocked out of the game itself. A lot of times these abilities on both sides will be the same, but every once in a while they will change. You may either lose an ability or you will gain an ability or an ability will change. So it's very important to read these over thoroughly. Um, they're not always going to be the same. This one kind of looks like it might be exactly the same from healthy to injured, uh, but some of them do change. So it's important to note uh, that as well. Here's the card for Cyclops, old Scott Summers. I love this dude. Uh, I know sometimes a lot of fans give him a lot of flack, but I always thought Cyclops and his brother Havoc were really, really cool. Uh, so again, all his his, nor his, his normal t items, icons up here at the top. He has basic attacks are Optic Blast and Optic Devastation. He can be the leader of the X-Men Blue team, um, and he'll get the special ability. Uh, if he is the leader, he can use this. He has Field Leader as a special ability, <clears throat> special superpower, Hit and Run, and Quick Draw. And again, his card when it flips. And you can tell because the blue side is the healthy side, the red side is generally the injured side, and a lot of times the the uh, the picture, the um, illustration will be different as well. So you can see here that his suit is all torn up, and he's sort of much more uh, ragged than he is on his healthy side. Then you're going to get cards, uh, smaller playing card size. Uh, a lot of times they will give you this little faction card. It's the same on both sides. Uh, but it will tell you uh, who, it, who, what models in the game have the affiliation for Uncanny X-Men. So we have Cyclops, we have Storm, we have Wolverine, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So I have Wolverine all painted up. Uh, Beast, Cable, Domino, and Jean Grey. So anytime that you're using any of these figures... Uh, in uh, in the game in your in your your team during a certain game you'll be able to unlock certain cards in here for instance this card children of the atom and like i said this is again a throwback to uh what the x-men were known as in certain comics um uh, being mutants they are children of the atom so it's a nice little call out to to those um sort of comic book titles and slogans and whatnot this is an Uncanny X-Men card. It says an Uncanny X-Men character may play this card. Remove all special conditions from this character. It gains one power for each special condition removed this way. And power is sort of your is your currency in the game. And you're using uh, your power to your power tokens to energize these special abilities. So as you can see here, his field leader ability costs three powers to activate. Three power tokens to activate. Um, and so that's the sort of currency of the game. Um, but you're going to get some cards in here. This is an Uncanny X-Men card as well. First class. Again, first class. Very cool. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well in the video because he's kind of light in the background there. But there are some characters that they have not come out yet that I'm really hoping to see. One of them, notably, is Iceman, which, again, really hard to see on the video. He's very pale in the background here. And Angel. Oh, I would love to see Angel. I can't wait. And I think this, uh, you know... Beast or Puck, if anybody goes back that far, they remember Puck. Um, but uh, X Men First Class card. Uh, this is to me my X Men Uncanny X Men card again as well too. And I guess there are no generic cards uh, in this. A lot of times they will say unaffiliated. They can be used by any any uh, any member, any team member kind of thing as well. The other thing that's really cool about these, if you're into collecting cards, and I used to love pop culture cards. Uh, when I was younger, the, the backs of these have the full color art of what's sort of portrayed on the front there. So very, very cool. If you're into collecting art and stuff from, from the comics, this is a really cool way to do so. And then you're going to get one of these. This is an actual uh, mission card, and this is a new one. Uh, you're going to get several of them in the base core set. This one is Mutant Madman uh, Turns City center into lethal amusement park and what you're going to do is that uh, you bring these to the table with you and you're going to bring two of them and it, you get to roll to see who chooses the, what two missions are going to be used and then at the very top this 18 number here is the amount of of uh, influence or power 
that you can use to make your team, which is this number here in the very top of the card. This is how much it costs to bring them to the field. So that is Cyclops and Storm, the pack there. Um, let's crack open this other box here. Sometimes you will get um, two heroes in a pack. Most times you will. They'll be of the same affiliation. Uh, this one you're going to get a hero and a villain. But like I said, I'm actually going to bring this villain as part of my X-Men team. Uh, and that is going to be Mystique. So same kind of thing. Cardboard divider. You've got your insert, which is, again, mostly just the credits page, as well as instructions on how to build your miniatures. If you are a miniature player who really likes to um, kit bash and change the way things uh, are built, this game is a little bit tougher in that regard. These are sort of designed in a way that they only go together in a certain manner, but... Uh, I have seen a lot of people online who have, have kitbashed them, who have changed them up uh, into different poses, and um, I'll show you one of those in a second um, that I thought was really, really cool, and I'm going to try to emulate. So you're going to get four small size bases. Uh, this is going to be for Mystique, so you get the choice of those four. This is for Beast. He's a little bit bigger of a character. Um, he's on that big, uh, like iron girder sticking out of the ground so he's gonna he's gonna use a bigger base and he is a little bit a bigger of a miniature you're gonna get two of those so you get a nice choice there and uh, let's look at raven here uh first or mystique raven dark home again very simple looks like a very easy build you got her back her front her two legs her her torso or her head and her arm her other arm here and then there's a basing pieces as well that kind of Give her a little more detail and it's i don't know if you can see this or not but this little round thing here is actually the emblem from the front of the x mansion uh it's all destroyed and kind of she's standing on top of it because she's always been sort of um you know anti um x-men and it, you know and a lot of these characters and that's the great thing about marvel comics is that a lot of these characters they they dive back and forth you know sometimes uh, venom is a villain sometimes he's a hero and the same thing with Mystique. I'm actually going to make her a part of my X-Men team because I really like her special abilities. And you'll see those in a few minutes. So here is the Beast. Again, a little bit bigger. You can see his torso is much larger than and, than Raven. She's almost bigger than the whole figure. Uh, his back looks like part of his legs, his arms. You get a variant head for Beast. Um, and this is kind of interesting. So you have the sort of feral face, but then you also have this one. Um, and it's pretty small, but... He has goggles on because right beast is super smart he's a super intelligent um scientist and so they have one with goggles and that was the kind of thing i wanted to do is i saw somebody online who had taken this idea given him the head with the goggles and then in this fist they had actually um mimicked it so it looked like he was reading a book like a textbook and i think i might do that because i think that's a really cool idea that he's out there sort of hanging from this girder uh and this steel beam and uh, he's reading a textbook i thought that was pretty cool uh, so i want to try to mimic, mimic that but as you can see here this is the st steel girder part here it's two pieces kind of hooks together and he's kind of dangling off it. and these are the base pieces that attaches to that and attaches to uh you'll glue right to your your bigger base here at the bottom let's crack open these cards and see what they look like this game is phenomenal. I really thought they did a really great job with it. There are a few things that I wish that it had done maybe a little bit differently. Um, but uh, I think overall the game is really, really cool. And, and from from what I can see, what I can uh, kind of foretell of what they're doing with the game is that you're going to see some really cool new features, especially with some of the new characters coming out. Uh, especially with the Sentinels, I think there's going to be some really interesting new play uh, abilities and details and the way missions are played. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that when I go into the full game too. There are actually crisis events, I believe they're called. Uh, things with like Ultron and um, Thanos and you're actually building, you're, you're, you're two players playing against the game. Uh, or two players playing against one player and they have super powerful abilities. So when you're playing against Thanos, he actually has, uh, Thanos has all the infinity gems and he's trying to gather them. They're on the table uh, and you're trying to stop him from doing so. So here's some more cardboard from the Beast and Mystique set. 
Um, you're going to get some tokens for X-Men. You got a couple tokens for Brotherhood of Mutants. Uh, these little check mark things are actually uh, activation tokens. So once you're done taking your two actions uh, with a character, you lay this next to it to show that they've already been activated. So a nice light way to keep track of that. Let's look at the Beast card. Henry McCoy. Again, all his icons up here. And then you have your two basic attacks, Acrobatic Strike and Animalistic Freestyle. Then you have Baser Instincts. These are your superpowers. Um, stars and Garters, right? Again, another throwback to a sort of key phrase, uh, a coin uh, phrase that, that Beast always use. Oh, my Stars and Garters, right? So cool, nice throwback to those kind of thing. Um, disconcerting yet provocative. And he's a wall crawler, which means he can crawl up walls. Uh, Spider-Man has this ability as well. So when you're approaching a building, it's almost like a fly ability. You can move over it without having to measure up and down the distance of the building. You simply just walk up it. His damage side or his wounded side looks like pretty much the same. Uh, his, his health actually goes down by one. So he starts with six health. And when he goes to this side, he actually only has five health uh, left remaining. We have the Mystique card. Raven Darkholm, her special abilities are pistol, so she has a, a ranged pistol shot, espionage, um, and then her special ability, she can actually be a leader of the Freedom Force, which is the Brotherhood of Mutants, a faction of that, so she can actually be a leader of the Freedom Force. Uh, if you're not using her, which I'm going to use her into my X-Men team, she will not have access to this ability. E Expert Sabotage, which this is the one I really want to use, this is the reason why I'm kind of bringing her, because I think this is really cool. It costs three power to use. And it says, action, choose an interactive terrain feature of size 3 or less within range 4 of this character. Enemy characters within range 1 of the terrain feature suffer 2 damage. The terrain feature is destroyed and removed from the battlefield. This superpower can only be used once per turn. So she's basically, she's, she's outfitted a building with explosives. And at some point during the game, she can spend 3 power to set off those explosives. Destroy that terrain feature and damage everyone on or around it. I think that's really cool. I, I just think that's really a fun uh, superpower to have. She's also a martial artist, a shapeshifter, and she has stealth. And shapeshifter, if you know anything about Mystique, she is. She's a shapeshifter. She's able to mimic uh, all sorts, sorts of people, which makes her an expert um, assassin. Uh, and what shapeshifter does is during this character's activation, enemy characters cannot use superpowers or reactive team tactic cards, which are these small ones. Uh, against her because um, she looks like somebody else. Here's her damage side as well. This will be about the same. Yeah, looks pretty, pretty close to the same on either side. Then we've got, oops, stay up there. And then we've got our team tactic cards. So here's one that says advanced R&D. This one is unaffiliated. Um, so it looks like anybody can use this. It says a character may spend up to five power to play this card. Choose a number of other allied characters equal to the power spent. Each chosen character gains a power. So this can be used by any character on the field. Really interesting. But it is sort of like, you know, has Beast on it. Oh, there he is reading the book. I think that's, again, I want to try to mimic that. I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, the Books of Truth. This is a Brotherhood of Mutants card specific for that. So I won't be able to use this card during my uh, X-Men team games. Uh, this is in here for Raven uh, Darkholm for Mystique herself. Um, and it clearly says it's, it's Brotherhood of Mutants only. And then we have Deception, which is another unaffiliated card, but it does have in bold Mystique's name, which means that Mystique can be on any team that you're playing, but this one can only be used by Mystique herself. So that's it. That is Marvel Crisis Protocol. This is the beginning of my X-Men team. Uh, oh, I said I was going to show you... Uh, Wolverine. Let me grab him real quick. It's up here on the top shelf. So Wolverine comes in a two-pack with Sabretooth. And again, I might throw Sabretooth into the mix when I'm doing my uh, X-Men team because that's been one of those things. I painted uh, Wolverine up in the sort of brown and yellows of the original days, the old days. I think that's to me one of the cooler cooler uh, outfits that he had but uh, that is my Wolverine he's going to be a part of my X-Men team as well because 
frankly, uh, Wolverine's been a part of just about every team in the Marvel Universe. So, thanks for watching the video. If you'd like this, please leave a comment and a like down below. Uh, also, uh, I have uh, some very exciting news. Um, we here at the QuestWise channel have been in contact with a company called War Games Delivered. And if you want anything from paints to terrain features to flocking uh, to glue to paint brushes, please check them out. I will put a link down below to their website. Uh, please check them out. Very, very great company. Small company, fairly new to the market. They have some amazingly great deals. They have a lot of really cool contests going on. Some really great people. Now, they don't sell the Marvel Crisis Protocol game or the figures, but they do sell some figures, notably like the uh, the D and D figures and some other fantasy figures. But if you are looking for terrain, uh, flocking and grass, uh, rocks, if you need paintbrushes, if you need supplies like tools, glue, all that kind of stuff, please check them out. Uh, very very cool company, and uh, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. So, thanks everybody for watching. I'm QuestWise. Until next time, please stay safe and as always, game on.